Hello, hello everyone. Hello and welcome to this Microsoft Build session. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, so this session is about embracing uh, or understanding how different um, different individuals are contributing to their community and bringing the passion of grassroots communities and they're bringing that to tech development, especially in Africa. So thanks very much for joining us again today. So my name is David Okeyade. So I am a cloud security architect at Palo Alto Networks, and we have an amazing panel with us today. So first of all, let me introduce to you Kolaru Adiola. So um, Kolaru Adiola is the co-founder of Bridge Tech Up. So she's a co-organizer of the Power Platform user group in Abuja, which is the capital city of Nigeria. And she's also the author I heard of two amazing books. She's a UI and UX design specialist. So welcome Adiola, how are you doing today? Very fine, thank you very much. Thanks very much for joining us. So I've, I've heard about you a lot. I've, I've heard a little bit about your story. I mean, your story is a very interesting one, Adiola. So from what I understand, um, two years ago, you were working in the teaching profession in the capital city of Nigeria. Fast yeah. forward two years later, you are the co-founder of a tech startup. You are a mentor to multiple other people in the Power Platform User Group in Nigeria. How did that happen, Adiola? Oh, well, it didn't just start from um, teaching. <laughs> I actually have a background in computer science because that was my course of study in school, in university. But to be frank with you, I hated it so much. <laughs> and um, that's because I actually wanted a blend of business and technology. But if you know Nigeria schools here, is either you go fully for business or you go fully for technology. So I didn't have that opportunity. And several times I actually contemplated on dropping out, but luckily wow. I finished <laughs> from this school. And at that point, I said, that's just the end with IT or anything that has to do with computer. And I got posted to um, an IT firm. And on getting there, I did an interview. I discredited myself so they won't employ me. But at the end of the day, I don't know why they chose me. I still got the employment. And after that, OK, I had a tour in different departments, the HR department, accounting department then the IT department and then they made me the business analyst of the company but they gave me um, a you know a task mm. to actually be designing prototypes of application mm. I knew nothing about it mm. so I had to learn on the job and for some reason I, I actually had fun doing that though it was really tasking but I had fun doing that and and after a while, I actually resigned. I was in Lagos then, and then I moved to Abuja. Mm. So on getting to Abuja, I needed something that would give me constant flow of income. But mm. and I actually don't want IT job. So I got an offer to teach elementary students mm. um, computer. Mm. So but I enjoyed doing that until when they said they would start owing me, which forfeits the whole point of getting the job. So I resigned, I had business, but I knew there was something more I needed. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to 2019, December, mm -hmm. I got a call from Strategy about MCT Niger, a Microsoft conference happening in Abuja. Mm -hmm. And he told me he had paid for me that I should, wow. I should be there. But somewhere in my mind, I knew that I wasn't going to go because I was done with IT. Mm -hmm. But the first day came and I didn't go. So mm -hmm. he called it, he knew what to <laughs> And I, I okay, I, I just had to promise him that I'll be there the following day so mm. as not to waste his money. Mm. So I came the following day and I was actually blown away mm. by a power platform. And I must say, mm. Mr. Deji is a great teacher. For everyone that I knew that as um that got admission into university and did the computer science as a course, mm. it was because he taught them. Mm even before they gain admission. It simplifies what seems like rocket science to elementary science. Mm. It's that good. Mm. So for the first time I was under his um, teaching and when he mentioned, the catch was when he mentioned less code, no code, I said, yes, this one is for me. <laughs> so so um, from there I started, I started learning from the community mm. and then I asked to give back to the community also. So I started a platform 
which is of two parts for mm. the career and the um the business part the business part is telling people or teaching people how to learn to grow their business using data and connecting them to mentors mm. that can help them in this mm. aspect and then the career part when you are done with the um a data analysis some skills that we were being taught or i was teaching mm. i connect them to organizations that need this kind of people mm. to work in such organizations so mm. that's basically my story wow that that's such an amazing story Adiola. and Thank one of you. the things that you mentioned that really resonated with me was you know the legacy idea where people think in order to be able to create solutions, build applications, you have to be like a hardcore coder, right? Yes. And and sort of like attending that conference sort of like exposed you to a different side that you did not see before, yeah. which is there's the old community around like the low code and, and no code community that's really growing. And that's very, very awesome. So like the role that you mentioned there, so it's very, it's very important to me also, like what, what you mentioned about community and the role that community played in that. So like what role would you say that 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 played in you um, getting familiar with things like the Power Platform in you just skilling up yourself and in you then being able to turn around and then create and build solutions? Like what role did the community, did the local community, I believe you're in Abuja, what role did that community play there? Okay, before we started the, um, the community in Abuja, we have the one in Lagos, which is like the biggest mm. of platform and that's where I connected and so um, um, over time they've been having um, like trainings mm -hmm. and then, um, this COVID period made it actually good because everybody now has to come online to learn and I could connect with everybody in the community mm -hmm. and where I have issues um, trying to solve some things I drop my questions they help me out and of course, I still have Mr. Deji, he's my mentor. So mm. I still ask him questions. He's my human resource, as I call it. <laughs> so I ask him questions and he helps me and I've been able to grow mm. through the community. Amazing story. Thanks very much for joining us at the other. Please hang around. We may have further questions for you, but that's such an inspiring story. Um, and I wish that your story really gets out to a lot of people out there. And I hope that that's, that's something that will really inspire others. Thanks very much. So Thank next you, up, yeah, no problems. Thanks very much. So next up, we have um, Ayodeji for learning. So Ayodeji is the one that Adiola has been referring to. So he's a data platform MVP. Is a community leader in the Nigerian Power BI and Azure Data User Group. He's a BI developer, he's a trainer, and he's also a managing partner at Jive Computer Solutions. So how are you doing today, Deji? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, really, really nice to, to see you again. So from I've known you for like a while now, and since the time that I've met you, right, and I've 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 spoken to other people about you, one of the things that they always bring up is um your passion for teaching technology right and adiola made reference to that also so from what i understand you have a lot of people that you've taught technology to and they ended up getting admission into university what's it that drives you to to take on that passion of communicating and helping others to understand technology well majorly if you look as around if you look at the community you find out that we just have few people that are actually doing very well in the it industry but mm -hmm. felt well, there is need to do more. And these young talent, they are very, very good. They just need somebody to put them on the right path. Mm -hmm. So I started with secondary school kids. And before you know it, all of them pick up their career paths mm -hmm. all around IT, IT, IT. Mm -hmm. Right from secondary school, I started exposing them. For those that want to do a career switch, I started so much to go. There are a lot of opportunity in IT, but mm -hmm. other course of study, they are finding difficult. They are doing jobs that are not, that are not really position them very well. Mm. So I just went all out. I spent money, time, mm. resources to develop these people. Mm. And um, in fact, today, my joy is seeing them grow. Just like what Adela just said, mm. it's always my joy. The testimony is, <laughs> that's all I want to hear. Thank wow. you. Wow, no, that's awesome. So just so you know, I, I think that we were uh, having trouble seeing your camera, so your camera may be switched off. And I know a few people may love to see uh, your lovely, uh -huh. your lovely face. So if we can just check the oh, camera and check that that's switched off. Let me just try to check it. Thank you. 
no, no problems about that. So, so yeah, so that's very, very interesting. So you're talking about um, how you saw like an issue that you you experienced, and then you taking that passion and going, I will help other people avoid this sort of issue. And that's sort of like the the spirit of community that's sort of driving a lot of these developments that we're seeing um, in, in in a lot of like um, African countries like these days. So what would you say then, like in terms of um, helping other people that may also be interested in contributing to different communities, helping them to identify uh, different talents like Adela um, and encouraging them to invest their time and resources like what you talked about. What would you say to them? Is it what at the end of the day, I guess is the question. Oh, OK, thank you very much for that question. Sorry, I don't know. My camera just went off. It's actually on. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> now back to the question. What I would tell people is this, whatsoever you have in capacity, ability in all ways to help somebody is an investment. Don't think of getting something back, but mm. just do it. Mm. One way it will come back to pay you. So yeah. I would tell anybody, anybody around you that you can help, please help. Mm. This selfish idea of let me keep it to myself is not mm. helping you, it's not helping the economy either. Mm. If I help Diola today, Diola might help my daughter tomorrow, mm. and that's just just to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. so do good and keep helping people in the community. Put yeah. them up and you never yeah. regret it. Amazing, amazing words of wisdom and encouragement there from you and Deji. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much for speaking to us. So just hang around. We may have further questions for you. But right now I'll go over to Samuel Omodadepo. So Samuel is an app maker is a public speaker, is presently the tech lead at Covenant Technologies, which I know is an amazing firm to work for. So Samuel, how are you doing there today? Um, I'm fine, good morning. Good morning, good morning, Samuel. So your story is very similar to, to Adiola's story. So it looks as if we have all these different tech up communities in Nigeria and in Africa that are just taking people in the teaching profession and making them passionate about technology and converting them to technologists. So I heard that that's your story also. You came from the teaching profession and now you're an app application maker. So what's your story? How did that come about? Well, uh, my story, uh, I remember uh, 2018, hmm. when I heard a lot of um, young, youthful member in my church traveling out. And when I look to them and hear, okay, why are they going out? How are they picking them up? I hear different countries coming into Nigeria to pick them up. Mm -hmm. And when they go, they will tell me uh, they are uh, computer literate, they do a lot of things, coding and all those things like that. So mm -hmm. I found interesting IT. Mm -hmm. And uh, I walked to one of them and I said, okay, can you assist me so I can just like move out from this teaching job I found myself because one, it wasn't motivating and in, uh, being in an environment that is not even well appreciated. Mm. So he told me, he said, there's no way for me in IT because I don't have experience in it and nothing like that. Mm. So I was discouraged and I felt bad and I felt reluctant in seeking for a job. Mm. And suddenly for me, I was an uh, opportunity to teach in a school where uh, Mr. Shea's kids attended. Mm. So mm. I walked to him and I told him to the sir, I need a job. I want to move out from this present situation I have. Mm. And he told me that he will assist me. And mm. a few days later, he called me in and told me, okay, there's a complaint in need of me. I will leave. I resume to their complaint the next day. Wow. And uh, the evening time, the complaint sent out a message to him that no, they don't need me anymore because I don't have any skills in IT. I, it was like, ah, wow. And I decided to help him. And he, I, he told me I felt bad again. Mm. So I was like, well, maybe there's no way out for me. Let me just keep on with my teaching job. And mm. he, he called me back. He said, uh, do I really have interest in IT? I said, yes. OK, do you really want to become someone like me too? And I said, yes. That mm. was how he picked me up and he pushed me into IT. Mm. And to the, shall I say to the glory of God, and luckily for me, people around and those who told me uh, there's no way out for me have seen me and what I do. They'd be like, and in fact, they've been running to me, let me see. They've been coming to me to like, okay, help me out the paths, how do you go about it and things like that. I was like, wow, okay. And I helped them. Yeah. So that's my way in IT. Awesome. That's a, again, that's a very, very inspiring story, amazing story. Now in your case, it's a bit different from Adiola's case because you didn't even have experience in that area. 
and oh. now you've now um, turned to someone that has experience in the area and also helping to develop others and actually working as a technical lead um, in a consultancy firm. So, um, what was the skilling like for you there? Like, how, how did you how did it get skilled up, and what was instrumental to helping you through that process? Wow. Well, let me, let me see. It wasn't easy, but uh, thank God I have uh, Mr. Shei being somebody who believes in uh, perfection from wherever or in any angle you're coming from. He doesn't believe that you you've been a new being. There's no way how no. So he, 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 he pushed me in, and the first thing he did was to put, uh, put me into a lot of reading. Mm. And I got to a point during the time I was doing, making a lot of reading, I felt tired. And I was like, wow, seems to be... Uh, well, he just like, okay, are you getting tired? And I said, um, no. But I, just, but I knew in me that I was getting tired because of a lot of reading. Mm. So And suddenly, he, just, he, he gave me a platform to change. And mm. the platform gave it out to me. I was like, wow, is this how it is? And I started making use of it and to uh, develop myself a lot. And to, to me, to my greatest surprise, Mr. Shea has seen a lot of what I do and is like appreciating the wow, I love the commitment coming in from you mm. and a lot more like that. Mm. So, awesome. I, but the challenge, the, 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 well, uh, first, it was so challenging because at that time, I, I, we have there's a project that came in. Mm. And being a new being, I don't have experience and no. But I just like, sir, I can't do this. How will I go about it? He told me, you can do it. Go and do it. Mm. And so thank God for a lot of reading. He has pushed me in. That was what really uh, helped me out. That I was able to um, make uh, develop the project all by myself with mm. less supervision. Mm. Awesome. And that's an amazing story again, Samuel. So again, hang around. We'll probably have one or two more questions for you. So let's go over to Sheyi Olua Wumiju now. So Sheyi is a Microsoft MVP. He's also the MCT lead uh, for Nigeria. So um, he's, um, he's the CEO of Covenant Technologies, uh, which someone now works with also. So Sheyi, I've known you for a lot of years now. And I must tell you, what the name that I call you, I call you Mr. Grassroots. That's the name that I call you. And you know the reason why I call you Mr. Grassroots? Because I remember the first time that we had a meeting and it was around like the Azure community. And where mm -hmm. you set the vision for us and you said, listen, the vision for this community should be to reach the unreached, go after the grassroots, right? So don't just stay in like the major cities. There's a lot of talent in our communities and those are the people that we should be targeting. And the way you said it then, I can sense so much passion in your voice and it just sort of lit a passion in me also. So my question to you, my first question to you is, what's behind that passion? Because that, that's the way that you've sort of like operated. You're always about the grassroots. You're always about let's get the, to the talent out there that's not rich. What's behind that passion there? I'm not sure if you can hear Shayi. Shayi, your mic is muted in case you're saying something. Oh, I think we have Shayi. So the first thing I, I want is. Oh, sorry, carry on. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, can hear you now. Awesome. Okay. Um, thank, thank you. For uh, uh, okay, as, um, uh, I remember I, I, where I uh, and uh, after, yeah, I think that we're experiencing some uh, technical issues with Shay's sound. So I think what we'll do is that we'll come back to Shay afterwards. So, um, for now, I think let's go over, let's go to air from. Um, Clement, and then we'll, we'll bring Sheyi back in after that. So let's go over to Clement. So next we have Clement. So Clement DK, who is a firmware and IoT consultant at Rug, uh, Rugby Business Solutions at Technologies Limited. So hello, Clement. How are you doing today? Hi, David. Yeah. How's it going? Nice to nice to see you. Nice to see you again. So the first okay. time that I heard you speak, I remember it was at um, uh, um, Azure Nigeria. No, actually, so it was the Azure West Africa Boot Camp event that we had last year. And I remember the presentation that you gave on Azure IoT was one of the best presentations I've ever heard on Azure IoT. 
right? It, it was it was amazing. And then I now came to find out that you actually accidentally got into technology. You were meant to be a biochemist, right? <laughs> and somehow you found yourself <laughs> being a technologist. What happened there? <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I w I studied at Federal University of Technology, but before then I never really liked electronics. Mm -hmm. So then. Uh, I wanted to change my course to biochemistry because uh, I noticed that my score did not reach the cutoff for medicine. So then I was like, okay, fine, let me go to Futa and let me pick biochemistry. Then I gave someone to help me do the change of course form and the person did it and then came back and gave me the slip. Then I took the slip home. I did not look at what was there. So when I got home and I looked at it and I saw electrical electronics, I shouted. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I showed my dad, I look at what is on this list. So my dad was like, ah, hey, let's call him. So then I called him, was like, ah, the course you gave me, the school is not offering that course. That you have that this is a nice course, you have to go for it. I was telling my dad that I don't know much about electronics, that why do I want to go and study it all of a sudden? My dad was like, let's just try that. If you cannot do it, you can change later on. So my first year was fine, lots of reading. Then my second year, the first semester. Mm -hmm. So someone was just driving by and the person said, um, Clem, there is a program happening in school. They are teaching on uh, microcontrollers. I don't even know what that is then. The, <laughs> can we go in so you can actually learn about it? I was like, okay, fine. I just came outside to get food. I wasn't dressed like properly understand. I was like, oh, let's go. So when I go to the class and then I, I the, the tutor was talking about microcontrollers. He was mm. saying different things that I don't actually understand. Mm. See, I did not understand anything during that meeting. I was just left with lots of questions in my head. So I was just asking, I would, any small thing I would ask, what's this, what's that? Everybody was just looking at me like, what is wrong with this boy? Like, are you not in electrical electronics? Like, you don't know all these things. So, so like, it went on and after that program, I was like the best um, student wow. from that um, distance. So that was how everything wow. just started. Exactly. Wow. So I took the tutor as my mentor. So anytime I had issues, I was just gonna meet him and yeah. please assist me with this. What do I need to do next? So that was how everything started. Wow, that is that is amazing. That's an, an amazing story. And one of the things that keeps coming up is the power of like community investment. Because to your story, the thing that sort of like changed like your direction in terms of being excited about um, electronics and being excited about IoT was actually a student of the university organizing an event to teach people about microcontrollers and then that sort of now led to the direction now where, where you're now sort of like the lead IoT consultant uh, in a top Microsoft partner and you know that's a very very interesting story in terms of like the power of community. Okay. Yes yeah, so uh so the thing is this like um because I noticed that um uh, like for instance uh, what has kept me in this part in my country mm -hmm. uh so most of the people started out in my school and said okay fine we are in electrical electronics we want to be able to um, learn IoT, want to do IoT, but then later on people branch out to say, oh, I want to do software development because it's as if this is what the, and people are talking about, so you understand? So they were like, if I should do this and if I should come out, will I be able to get a job in this country on that? So that kind of um, lets so many people not follow this path. But I think, yes, community is actually really helpful because Mr. Shea has also assisted me also. For instance, anytime they say hackathon, IoT hackathon, Mr. Shea will push it to me. I claim go on to do so, you understand? So mm -hmm. like even during my school period, I like represented the school on some few occasions um, for mm -hmm. hackathons. And then mm -hmm. um, even coming out of school during my service year, I did some other hackathons, some Microsoft hackathons. And even last year, that, um, 2020, there's this um, Microsoft hackathon that uh, I and my team won. We did an IoT solution. Mm -hmm. So exactly, yeah. So community, and it's something that we really want to like push the Azure IoT community in them. Um, um, Nigeria here. Yeah. So we want to actually push that so that people can be able to learn this skill and know that, okay, fine, there is, um, like, this is a fast growing um, field, you understand? This is something that people are, re people really want to actually, um, um, like, they want to invest in, they want to they want to digitize their business. They want to mm -hmm. automate things. And yes, so I feel that this is something that we really need to bring people on. Our community is really helpful and that's helped me so far. Wow, that's awesome story. Thanks very much for that, Clement. So let's go very quickly to Mr. Sheyi and then we'll come to 
um, a, a queen over there, so, so Betty Rose, so, and then to wrap it up for us. So for first of all, um, Shea, are you back? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, but um, sorry um, for cutting off. Uh, I, lo I love your yeah, cap also. Your, your, cap, your cap is, yeah, uh -huh. maybe, maybe it's the cap that's blocking the signal or something. <laughs> uh, maybe. <Yeah. laughs> so the question, maybe. I was asking, the question maybe. I was asking you before it cut out was around your passion for yeah. the grassroots, because I've always noticed that about you. And again, it's not because we're on the call. Everyone knows you've been doing this work and um, developing like the African community when it wasn't popular. You were one of the first people that was really um, and doing the work. So what's behind that passion and how would you encourage everyone else to sort of um, just get excited about that and get excited about putting back into their communities to get it going? Yeah, um, uh, just briefly because of time. Um, one, I, one thing I know is that uh, we have so many untapped talent in Africa generally, whether it's in Kenya, whether it's in, in uh, West Africa, North Africa, we, a lot of them, but they need a platform. Mm -hmm. Generally, that's what I could not have in high school. And that's what drive my passion to be able to go ahead, push people from where they are, bring them to, you know, it is not about having your knowledge caged, it's about spreading it out. Just mm. as Deji said, moving, pushing forward. Mm. Once you have the same knowledge, share it among people, expand the horizon, let Africa get ignited so that mm. we can have people coming out from the rural area, developing techno, because I can tell you that the grassroots is where the untapped knowledge is in Africa. Mm -hmm. And until we reach them and bring them out from their core knowledge and spread them out, we can have innovation changes that can come across all the African sector. So my passion is my experience in the past and my motivation is to bring it forward, allow people to have better way of interacting even in the, in the current uh, dispensation wow preach it brother i tell you <laughs> uh every time i listen to you speak i was actually making notes for behind the scene right so that's a new <laughs> quote you know the grassroots is where the untapped talent is in africa i just made a note of that and i'll definitely be using that i'll be crediting you i promise thanks very much for that and last but not <laughs> the least <laughs> thanks very much for joining us last but not the least we have betty rose in Gigi. So Betty Rose is joining us from Nairobi, Kenya. Now, Be um, Betty Rose is a technical program manager at Microsoft. She works um, with Microsoft Graph API developer tooling and also with X Oracle. How are you doing today, Betty Rose? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me here. No, nice to have you here with us. So one of the things that I've looked, because I looked you up and I saw like a lot of things that you've been involved with. And again, it comes back to developing talent in Africa. Right. Mm -hmm. And I see mm -hmm. there's a lot of involvement that you've had with that in the past. So my question to you would be um, a bit different and than the question that I asked to others. What do you see on the horizon, Betty Rose? Do you see is what you're seeing is the encouraging, right? In terms of the talents that's been developed locally in Africa and the work that you're doing. Is that something that encourages you? Or is that something that you think that it may take a while before we begin to see some results? I think this is a really good conversation you're having and I love the stories from everyone uh, talking about how they changed courses and now they're doing well in tech. Yeah? And when I look at what's happening in Africa, I think the future is present. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you from a couple of ways. Mm -hmm. An example is Microsoft, for example. Microsoft has created two development centers in Africa, one in Lagos and one in Nairobi. Mm. Just to give you perspective, the mm. Nairobi one, we just hit 300 wow. engineers sitting wow. in Nairobi. Wow. Yeah, 300. And it's growing, it keeps growing. Mm. The Nigerian one mm. will probably be hitting 100 in a few weeks, and wow. the growth will be exponential from then on. Mm. Um, recently, you saw Twitter is pitching tent and opening an office in Ghana. Mm. Google, I'm sure, is also doing something in, in the works. Amazon mm. is in South Africa, you know, so there's a lot um, there's a lot of validation of the fact that talent is mm. actually distributed 
opportunities wow. are not, you know. Mm. And now Africa mm. is getting on the limelight and there's a lot of companies uh, coming to pitch and, and empower our people here. And mm. for us is to seize the moment, like wow. the, the, the future is now, it's just to seize the moment. And I'll just talk about a couple of initiatives that I have seen. I am a product of community myself, <laughs> you know. Yeah. When I was in uni, I was a regular at a local community tech center or innovation center called I Have, and that's where I used to go and mm -hmm. see presentations um, from people sharing knowledge. So I'm a, I'm a product of community. And I think it's good that there's someone who said, if you have been given an opportunity, please extend it to others, you know, like mm -hmm. in form of mentorship. And one of the things I have seen companies like Microsoft in Kenya do is a program called Game of Learners. Mm -hmm. And as essentially what this program is supposed to do, it goes in into the universities and it picks um, a couple of students and then puts them together for a couple of months, creating solutions and getting mentorship from um, Microsoft employees. Mm -hmm. And this has enabled a lot of uh, students to gain an opportunity to work with industry and get prepared for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And recently it just launched in in Lagos and Lagos um, Nigerian universities could also participate. It's called Game of Learners. Mm. And the second one I want to highlight is the MVP program, which most of you are part of, which is a really good opportunity for you to create a community to train other people. Mm. And so if, if you're really passionate about technology and you know you want to train other people about Microsoft te uh, technologies, mm -hmm. MVP becomes a really good platform and Microsoft is going to support you. So I would say the future is now. Mm. Wow, that is amazing. Thanks very much for that, um, um, Beth Rose. And I encourage people to go check that out. So Game of Learners, that sounds like a very, very exciting um, um, platform. So thanks very much for that. That's very useful. So before we leave today, just want to do a very quick one. So I'll just go around to all our amazing uh, speakers on this panel today. And I want you to tell, I, I want to hear sort of like your, your favorite African food to eat. So just in one word. So your favorite African food to eat before we go. So let's start first. So let's go to Adiola first. Adiola, your favorite African food to eat. Which one? Don't mention the love. <laughs> Is Adiola still there? Or Adiola is gone. I think Adiola will be gone. So let's go to she. <laughs> let's go to uh, Deji. Deji, are you there? Yeah, favorite, I'm with you. Favorite African food to eat? Okay, if not your love, then it will be Amala. And Amala. We do. You're, a you're a proper Yoruba man. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, Samuel, is Samuel still there? Samuel? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, favorite, favorite African food to eat? Founded yeah. I'm with Egusisu. Man, I'm hungry. I am hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sheyi, your favorite African food to eat? With your cap, it better be well, like a real true local food. <laughs> uh, well, well, for me, um, I like beans and uh, dodo. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> well, <laughs> you will take that, no problem. It's not too bad. <laughs> Clement, how are you? Uh, so mine is Okazi soup with a bar. That's what we're talking about, Clement. That's what we're talking about, Okazi soup. <laughs> and finally, uh, Betty Rose, what's your favorite African food to eat? I feel like I'm missing out with all the West African food. I will say pilau and chapati. Wow, I, I better try yeah. that when I visit Kenya. So yeah. that's amazing. Thanks very much for our amazing panel. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. So it's been amazing. I've, I've learned a lot from our, from our panelists and a lot of information has been shared. I'm much more encouraged to go back to the community and look for that untapped talent and help in the development. Um, but for now, that's our session for now. So we'll see you later. Have a lovely day, lovely evening, lovely morning. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.